Uh, Mike Lee, uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to Sconon.com today and congratulations on Mr. Turner, a stunning picture. Thank you. It's one that you've been looking to make for the best part of 20 years. So well, for 15 years actually. 20 years is overdoing it slightly, I think. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, how has it only come to fruition now? Well, it came to fruition, of course, a few years ago because it took us a while to make it. Um, just took a long time to raise the money, really. Um, now, you're renowned for your method of uh, rehearsals and building the story and the characters with your cast. Um, now, the fact, did the fact that you had to uh, keep to certain historical facts and events uh, impede or impinge in any way on that process? Absolutely not. Um, it's an irrelevant consideration. That is what we were doing. I mean, the joy of it was to go out and find out about a world and bring it to life, same as we did with Topsy Turvy, in fact. Um, there was no sense of impediment of any kind. It was liberating to be able to explore and you know, bring all kinds of discoveries back together and to put them into action and breathe life into them, as I say. So what is it then about uh, Turner's work that makes you such a great admirer of his? Well, you've only to stand and look at the sky or look at the sea or the landscape or experience the weather or the seasons um, to if, if be able to understand what Turner was capturing and getting to the essence of in some way. Um, because he painted much more than that. He was great at so, ships and, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, I find it very inspiring. And it's also, his work is very cinematic. And that, you know, the sublime spiritual stuff that he painted in relation to this eccentric guy that he was, uh, felt like a good chemistry for, for a film, really. Okay. Now, um, you're um, acclaimed director in his early 70s making a film about uh, an acclaimed artist with a great deal of film dealing with him in his 70s. So inevitably some people may read this as being at least partially autobiographical. Is there any autobiographical intent with Mr. Turner? I, I hadn't thought of it at the time, but now everybody is telling me it's autobiographical. I suppose I better accept that it is. But it's not anything I was aware of while we were making the film, I must say. The serious answer to that question is not really over and above the fact that I could understand what the guy is about, as could all the other people who collaborated on the film with me, who are also creative people. And then in terms of casting Mr. Turner, was Tim Spall always the first choice? He was, yes. Now, uh, there is a line that I'm sure a lot of critics are picking up on in the film, which is, of uh, course, from uh, John Ruskin, where he says, there is no room for cynicism in the reviewing of art. Now, I've looked into it, and I can't see anything attributing a quote like that to Ruskin. So was that a line created specifically for the film? It was a quote from Ruskin. Okay. And if you couldn't find it, that merely reflects on your powers of research. That's all I can say. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I'll blame Google myself, but Very then good. again, that's its own... Well, that serves you right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, but in terms of that quote, though, by keeping it in there, is it something that you wanted to direct maybe some criticism towards Ruskin for how he treated Turner's work no. later on? No, I mean, Ruskin obviously was a very important factor in Turner's history. Um, Turner was sceptical about him in some ways, um, but Ruskin was undoubtedly something of a prig and something of a prude and uh, was nothing if not precocious. And we show him in the context of his parents who obviously uh, cosseted him and spoiled him and molly, uh, molly coddled him. Um, and it just felt a very natural way of representing a man who is always represented in a quite different way, in a rather uh, sombre and doer way. Now, you're returning to stage next year with the production of The Pirates of Penzance for the English National Opera. Yeah. Now, given your commitment to both film 
and theatre. Is there I, any one of those mediums that you feel might give you more, shall we say, satisfaction as a director? And as well, a first of all, m- doing the Pirates of Penance is completely outside my normal field of activity. I've done lots of plays of my own, mm-hmm. but this is the only time I will have done a piece of work that isn't in that genre. And it's just really a kind of... I'm just doing it because it might be interesting and uh, educational and amusing. Um, I do do plays from time to time, but film is my favourite and natural habitat, really. Uh, I think film is a fantastic medium, and it's what I really feel most at home with. Can't agree more. Um, Finally, um, there's... a yeah, quote uh, tribute to you where you say, I make films for audiences, I can't make a film without thinking about an audience. Now with that in mind, given the very, um, we'll say the less than heroic portrayal of Mr. Turner in the film, and thinking of some other characters you've created, like say Johnny in Naked, do you ever worry that audiences just might not click with some of your creations? Well, it doesn't happen. People do click. People do see them. People people do resonate with the fact that these seem like real people. Therefore, they seem like people they might know. I think that's what the turn-on is for audiences. I mean, it is true that many films work for audiences because they create heroes who are not people like people the audiences know, who are not people like the audience members themselves, but are idealised ideas of how life might be in some magical other world. But I think the turn on for people, as I understand it, with my films, is the exact opposite. Hitchcock famously said that a woman who spends all day cooking and ironing and cleaning and scrubbing does not want to go to the pictures in the evening and see a film about a woman who spends all day scrubbing and ironing and cleaning and etc. And I could not uh, agree with, ter- with um, Hitchcock less I think it's bollocks, basically. <laughs> um, because actually people really get off on seeing films about life that they can really identify with and feel, you know... I don't think all films should be such a diet, any more than I think all films should be escapist. Actually, you, if a film's not entertaining, it's not worth making. Hmm. I hope that Mr Turner is two and a half hours of solid entertainment, of things that are tragic, funny, sad... Interesting, educational, uh, confronting, uh, etc. But always interesting and always such that people feel that these are real people having real experiences and real feelings and that, with whom they can, the audience can identify. Okay. Well, having seen it, I can confirm it is the two and a half hours of entertainment you aim for. Good. Well, that's the thing, really. Okay, on that note, I'll say thank you very much, Mike Lee. Thank you very much.